ebook is. Of course, for those that are members, there is a discount. But as I say many times, to get this discount, you need to contact me via, me via email because we will not go through the website, but we go directly via email. And I will explain to you how easy it is to get the discount, okay? And also how easy it is to receive the ebook, okay, via email. And this uh, week, uh, Leandro, a guy from uh, Argentina, he just got his ebook with a 50% discount. Thank you again, Leandro, for buying the ebook. Okay, so let's start. Uh, today, the topic of today, it's going to be very interesting because uh, we, sp we speak a lot, we talk a lot about design projects, about planning, how creative we have to be. Ciao, Dimitrios. How are you? How are you? Okay, go to your driving license and drive safely. Okay, <laughs> Dimitri is uh, it's taking his uh, driver license. So he, he just uh, came in to say hello. And at the same time, he has uh, he has his driving license. So driving lessons are much more important. So go ahead, get that damn driver license. Okay. Rajat, sir, is it okay to use scale for the perspective lines? Scale, what does it mean? To do the lines slowly because my drawing is looking messy, dirty. I don't seem to get it right, uh, rid of it. Uh, what do you mean about scale? I don't understand that. I'm sorry. How to use a scale for perspective lines? What do you mean? I don't understand. Perspective lines, I do it by eyes. I teach people how to understand how to do it with by eyes you know you look at your drawing and you realize right away whether it's right or wrong and how you can make corrections so i don't understand what do you mean when you say use a scale well explain yourself better okay so let's come to the hiring uh ah, ruler uh okay yeah of course you can always try the rule sometimes i use a rule just to check you know uh but put light lines okay because what you we want to want what we want to see is your sketch, not the lines of the ruler. Okay, so yeah, why not? If this can help you, why not? Try, try. If it works for you, try. That's very great. It's very good. Okay, so I hope you can hear me well. Looking at my display, looks that the microphone is fine. Okay, so let's go to the hiring news. Okay. And, now that we, and after that, we will talk about the topic of today, which is how we start a design project and the strategy we have to use. Because there is a strategy. If you don't have a strategy, what the hell are you doing? You're just going just gonna to do styling. But if you want to be a designer, you need a strategy. You need to know the step-by-step, -step, okay, of a process that you want to use so that you can say, that you can put, first of all, your uh, personal input in the in visualizing this project that will be different from another colleague or another student in your class at the same time it will give you a better clear idea how you can make that project so that you don't forget most important points to answer so that when you present your project the teacher or the design manager or design director they will look at it and say well the project is cohesive it's coherent now, the only thing they can say is, I don't like what I like. But they, don't, they cannot say, ah, you forgot this, you forgot that. You understand? So that's a strategy. What type of approach we have to use when we start a project? And then, of course, there is a creativity, which is very important. Because that's your, your personal input, your inner, you know, your inner talent that comes out and makes the interpretation. But it is an interpretation of a strategy. Okay? A method. All right, we'll talk about that. So hiring news so we start again with italy remember a few weeks ago i talked to you about grand studio design center which is a small private company that is very good it's growing very well has important uh very important uh clients and uh don't forget that all those informations that i am giving to you 
they come, I, I can find them, okay, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, okay, but the most important thing is that I find them from uh, two pages, okay, one page is uh, car and sketch on Instagram, car and sketch, and then the other one is transportation designers, okay, I'm trying to find for the link so that I can put the link here. That way you can just click and find their uh, uh, Instagram page, and uh, I, I I really hope you gonna that you gonna that you are going to to follow that page because that page is very good. Okay, let's go and check. I'll do this for you and then we start. Okay, transportation designers. Here we go. So I got. Uh, I've got my link and I put it here right now. Look. So go and check them out. Those guys are really good. They're doing an excellent job. You know, if you want to know what's going on in the car design world, also interviews, some interesting, uh, uh, really nice uh, uh, posts about uh, car design, the latest events about car design, interviews with the important designers. Uh, and then news about hiring and opportunities or, I don't know, uh, other um, events that are going around car design, then uh, this page is not bad at all, okay? <clears throat> Sir, can we accept the link after the live stream? Yeah, of course, Rajat, you don't have to, to click now. <laughs> anyway, remember, it's, it's very simple. Uh, Raja, it's called transportation's little, you know, little uh, line, little line uh, designers on Instagram. Transportation designers on Instagram. Check it out. All right. So, uh, as I was, as I was, I was saying, here we have Ground Studio that is looking for an entry level cap designer in Torino, Italy. Okay, so Grand Studio, go and check it out. I I write to you here, Grand Studio. Okay, you can find this name on uh, uh, Google. Yeah, but Rajat, why don't you use your PC and and check uh, and check uh, directly on uh, on your PC, or you can just click on the link now. And then you come back to the live. That's no problem. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> okay. So don't worry. All right. Okay. So Grand Studio. They do interior, exterior, color and trim, prototypes, do everything. It's a small company, but it's very good. It's growing really well. And as I said before, they are very important clients. So if you go over there as an entry level designer, it's a very good start. It's a very good start to learn. Okay. And as I say all the time, every time, the, the first job, as long as you're in a good company, I mean, medium good company, but not the worst one, it's, it's going to be always a great opportunity to learn, to start learning. Therefore, Grand Studio is very serious. Uh, ciao, Pierre. How are you? Welcome back. <laughs> I'm fine, man. <laughs> Everything is fine. Thanks. All right, then there is another one that is looking for an engineer. So if out there you are engineers, I'm, I'm sure a lot of Indians watching that I say, hey, it's me. Okay, that uh, wish to work in the car design industry and do something that is engineering, but that has to do with the car design, then you want to be very careful about this opportunity that comes from Lamborghini. Yes, Lambos manufacturing engineer for interior trims in Italy, in Modena, in the cities, in the center design facility of Lamborghini, okay, manufacturer also. So what does it mean manufacturing engineer, you know? Uh, a manufacturing engineer for interior trims, it's an engineer, in general, those engineers are young, young people. With I, at work, I have uh, 
I have to do with several of them on my projects, that are engineers, experts, uh, that will talk with suppliers on interior trims, so plastic parts, basically. So they must know really well the plastic industry, okay, technology. And uh, for that, it's not, I mean, it's not uh, difficult. Uh, I mean, I, I can, I could even do it <laughs> with the experience I, I learned in, during all those years. I'm not an engineer. So if you are an engineer, you would like to work as an engineer and be the link between suppliers, pl design platform and designers and design management. This is the place, the job for you. Manufacturing engineering for interior trims. This is in Lamborghini, in Modena, Italy. So go and check it out. Then we have another company, which is an excellent company, really good company. Our cousins, okay? <laughs> Nissan, senior exterior designer in Paddington, UK. So here they're looking for somebody that is a little bit more experienced. Senior exterior design in Paddington, UK, okay? Then we have always in UK, two more. The second one is Aston Martin. And those are the same two of last week that still did not find, uh, you know, the right designers. So Aston Martin, visualization artist in Warwick, UK. And then again, the Indian motorcycle company very very famous royal hanfield they are looking for a senior industrial designer in uh, branting thor uk okay those are the news for today i don't have any more news so i just make a quick resume grand studio car designer entry level okay maybe they can offer also an internship you can try ask them Lamborghini, manufacturing engineer for interior trims, Italy, Modena. Nissan, the family, senior exterior designer in Paddington, UK. Aston Martin, visualization artist in Warwick, UK. And then the last one, Royal Enfield, which is a senior industrial designer, job available, in uh, Branting Thor, I don't know this, this town, Branting Thor, UK. All right, so now that we did that, how are you? We are still four, there are not too many people. I think there are a lot of people that are on vacation. I'm not on vacation yet. Next week I will be on vacation. Are you ready to go on vacation? We are at the end of July. Okay. So, you know what we're going to do now? I will change camera because to show you the design uh, project approach strategy, I need to use my white paper and my marker to make a little schema onto the scheme, on, onto the paper, so that you can understand the step by step. Okay? So, I will change the camera. So, uh, first of all, I, I, I need to put this a little bit higher like that i hope it's gonna work like this ah look at what arm i have it's it's not bad it's pretty nice okay so i am going to see top camera only uh it's not working why It's not working because it was not, the jack was off. Okay, so now I have to just organize this a little bit better so that you can have a better service. I am watching on my display how the hell this is moving. All right. Okay, now I'm fine. I'm going to change the camera. Okay, so as you can see, <clears throat> let's do this way, because this way you can see me, I think it's better, huh? it's better that way, so that you can see me, so when I talk, I can talk to you, unless I'm going to talk to the microphone, 
<laughs> all right so first of all let's talk about design project strategy this is the lesson of today okay so the thing is that when we start a project okay you get a briefing and the briefing there is something you know it's written something so your manager your teacher at school or your manager at work you say okay guys we have to make this new product this is the team we are three four five people I will explain to you uh, the briefing is this client uh, I don't know it will come out let's suppose in 2035 so project is for 2035 okay so we have a time that's the time when the project has to be in production this means that we start a project at least four years before so we have to start this project 2031 all right and before 31 we will probably if i make a you know 2035 2031 when we start and here in 2030 we do a little bit of r d okay research okay so this part some people will just uh, maybe a small team uh, they will just sketch there is a manager maybe it's not gonna be the ma the final manager it's not gonna be the guy or the girl that will bring the project till the end it's the person that within the design team will start managing a very light beginning of this project reflections you know i mean what do you think it's gonna be this project from in 2035 five i don't know the future you know family car full electric or hydrogen uh, or new technology because in 2035 electric will probably already be over and we are already moving to a new energy uh, system so when we start those these things and after we start the real project we have some questions so first of all 2035 the first question is how is going to be i mean what type of uh, you know what type of society people young generation what type of people we're gonna have in 2035 that's the first question and so what type of uh, life people that's the first question so we have to answer to this question then we have another question that is very important and this is a little bit wider okay it's gonna be what about world economics and politics so world economics and politics when i mean politics i mean also if there is a war for example nowadays we are sadly i say it very sadly looking at this insane war between uh, uh, Ukraine, Russia, in other in other parts of the world also, it's not just there. If you go in African countries or in in other uh, Asian countries, there are little conflicts and stuff. So, how much? I mean, uh, how much those scenarios affect? the market the people because in general when there is a war and people feel how can i say scared like when we had the covid you know same thing it's generating 
scared. People are afraid. So what happens? During the COVID, a lot of people saved money. They did not spend. The only people that got a lot of money, that earned a lot of money, were the, the online stores. Like Amazon, the big distributors, you know, Alibaba, all those people. Why? Because I'm, I am uh, at home. I need something. I cannot go to the store because, it, because it's too, you know, I had to put the mask, I had to put the, the thing. I don't want to go through all that. And then they will look at my documents and stuff. So I stay home. I go on the internet and I find what I need. So those companies, they had an incredible high, you know, in terms of their, uh, in their, 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 their sold items that showed also to the people a new way of living the life. And also in Italy. Italy is a country, for example, very traditional. I mean, if you tell, you know, if three years ago you would say to somebody in Italy, I mean, from my, to my friends, I bought this on the internet, I bought the food on the internet, I bought the wine on the internet, I got this nice sweater, I bought it on the internet, uh, they delivered it to my house, they would look at me and say, oh, come on, can't you go to a store? You find better quality, you can, you can use it, you can... You can try it on, you can see yourself, you can listen to the people, you have a contact with people. So I am I live here alone and, and many times I use internet to buy my stuff. But my friends, for example, they always thought that I was a little bit strange. I was too relying on the internet too much to buy stuff. Now, after COVID, they do the same thing. So do you understand the transformation? Of, uh, of habits. So this is important because this is affecting our lifestyle. You know, the lifestyle changes. What's happening in economy, what's happening in, co in politics, in, uh, in, the, uh, in the balance that we have all over the world between countries. Okay, so then there is another question. Technology. So, when we talk about uh, a future project, it's too easy, you know, it's too easy to say, okay, uh, I already know what the technology, we have electric, hydrogen, uh, the car can fly today, and, uh, I don't know, diesel cars are dead, you know, petroleum is dead, okay, but this is today. So when we ask designers to project themselves in 10 years from now, or even more, the question comes again, which technology? Now, of course, you cannot say, I'm going to use this technology that does not exist yet. But you can make a research, a research, around to understand what type of technologies are under development in R&D where companies are investing a lot of money. For example, we always said that when we do, uh, when we buy an electrical car, there is a battery. And a lot of people, they're right, saying, yeah, be careful with the battery because inside there are stuff like lithium and other materials, uh, Premier, that are not very nice and safe for the planet to go and search. So we cannot use too much of that. Uh, we have to find a different solution for electric cars. Well, today they are experimenting new type of batteries that do not have those materials. Now, don't ask me what technology, because I don't know. I know that they are doing a lot of work uh, in experimentation with graphite. Graphite. This one. Graphite. You see? Graphite. Because they discover with the graphite, they can provoke a sort of a chemical reaction that uh, provokes electricity. I'm, I don't know because I'm not an engineer, not a chemistry expert. But I read an article, more than an article, saying that if we are able to make this work, then the battery will be smaller, lighter, 
and this means that uh, our design will be much better and slicker because today the battery is so heavy, so big. What the color do you think will be in the future? Hey, Raja, that's what I'm talking about. So listen to me. All right. So we are, we already have some informations today that in a way let us understand a little bit what can happen tomorrow. And that's what you have to do. So you have to make research. I know that you are not an engineer, that you are not working in the industry yet. Me, I'm not an engineer, but what do we do in general? We go and search for info. In China, for example, there are several companies that are working how to produce electricity for cars, alternative to batteries. Because the Chinese understood that they cannot make batteries for all the world because it's not uh, sustainable. In this first part, maybe yes, but we quickly have to go through another type of uh, energy source. Okay, so this is another question to which we need uh, to give a, uh, uh, an answer. So once you give an answer to all this, you reach the most important part to start your project. There you can start. It is your storytelling. Storytelling. Because if you don't have a storytelling, you don't have a project. This is something very important you have to understand. Storytelling. So let's take this nice uh, highlighter uh, that I love. So the storytelling is all those questions and answers together, together, and they give you all the ingredients to make your pizza, you know, to, to make your storytelling, you know. You cannot make a pizza if you have only, I don't know, tomato sauce, because you are missing the other ingredients. You cannot make, a, I don't know, a trip. If you know where you want to go and how to do if you don't have the money, you need all the ingredients. You need the money, the hotel, you know, everything. If you want to make a pizza, you need all the ingredients. And here, to make a, a, a strategy a approach to start your project, you need a storytelling. And in the storytelling, those are the ingredients to which you have to give an answer. So once you have that answer, then you can start sketching. Because you start having an idea. And you say, you can say, okay, people, well, people will not have the telephone today. They will have a different technology, but of course, the info, fast information, available to everybody, maybe it will be even for free. It will be done in a different way, maybe on the glass of cars, not anymore on your device, in your hands. Maybe when you get into a bus or when you get into a plane, there will be a sort of information that are public that if you want to see, it's enough to go and check the window of our car. And it, it's going to be like a display, like a, like a, a TV. And we can uh, uh, turn it on and off. Then we will have another type of device. Today we already have some... Uh, uh, foldable displays, you know, that you can bend that are that will be replacing telephones. So imagine how you can use that on top of your body. You know, maybe I can wear it just like I wear my watch. Something that I do like that that I can see everything. I don't know. I you have to I don't know, maybe I'm saying stupid things, but this is just an example to let you understand how you have to start using your creativity. It comes from those answers. And then 
Another thing, you are young, younger than me. When I see my 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 son or their friends, they are 19 years old, 18 years old. They think completely different from me. Besides, you see me, I'm not somebody that I mean, I have my 60 years old, but I'm not somebody like a grandfather, not yet, you know. But still, there is a big difference in the, in, the, in the life approach. So how this is important to understand what they will like. And what they will like, that's a big question. So then we hope that after the war that we have today, in a couple of years or less, we hope less, we will not have any more uh, war. This means that the economy will go up because there is a reconstruction. A lot of companies will, will survive, will live again. So there will be a lot of money turning in a part of the world. And everything is connected to that because of global co uh, economy. So if in Ukraine, for example, we have to reconstruct towns, buildings, roads, bridges, railroads and stuff, well, I'm sure that there will be a lot of companies of several nationalities that will work on that. This will, will move economy. So this is another aspect to think of. Oh, just like COVID. When we had the COVID, everything stopped. After COVID, everything moved again and the economy went up. The, the, if you see the stock options uh, at the American uh, uh, auction or in any type of uh, you know uh, of uh, exchange uh, uh, be, uh, um, office in the world, now everything is up. So at that time we were down thirty percent, forty five percent. It was a disaster for those for those that had investments. But today it's okay, no big deal, because. The economy went up, everything recuperated, people start spending, people get gadgets, people buy again cars. And then the technology. Technology will be very important. A lot of people buy uh, products because they have a better technology. And today, today, and I think tomorrow even more, everything is bio, green, uh, respectful of uh, the world and stuff. It's going to be hot. Hot things to have. Everybody wants to show, you know, I, I did my good action in buying this and not that. So, though this is a little bit late motive in terms of mentality, approach, cultural approach tomorrow. So, once you have all this, you give yourself answers. Then you can start saying your storytelling. So, let's imagine that the, that the project is about a minibus for the town. Okay, well, once you have this, you can sketch. And you can start thinking, how do I put the people together? How many people are put in this device? Is it big? Is it shorter like this one? What type of uh, architecture I do inside? Do I, do I make uh, an area where people are really comfortable? Or I don't care, I put everybody standing up. Because this is five minutes, uh, you know, going from A to B, it's a very quick, short uh, runs and stuff like that. But you have to decide. In, in, in this sketch, I was thinking the orange part is for the people that can stand up. Because they are standing, a lot of people stand up in the bus, in the metro, in the, in the train, you know. But this one is because we're always going to have old people. They need to be sitting. Or women that are pregnant, they need to be sitting. Or little kids that cannot stand, especially when it's too hot or whatever. They need to be sitting. So there are some habits that will not change according to the age or the, the physical problem. So we desire to have to think about all this. When you are able to do all that, then you can go and you start sketching. And this is just quick sketching, yeah, five minutes, just to reason. You can use this type of sketch to talk to your colleagues in your team so that you talk and say, oh, I say what, what do you think? What are we going to do? And then exchanging, you will have the opportunity to shoot 
for one, two directions, and you can make, you know, you can make the A solution and the B solution, because you always want an alternative, okay? And then you develop. Of course, all this you have to explain to your director. You have to explain to your teacher. If you are working a team, you have to work this within your team. If it's a, te a student team, you have to do it. Ciao, Adele. Welcome back. Thanks for being here. All right. Because your vision does not mean that it's 100% correct. Maybe a colleague has a, is, has a slightly different point of view. And maybe it's better. And that the interesting thing when we work in team is that we put together things. The force, the forces of everybody united, okay, to make a strong project, a strong approach. So you develop two solutions. And of course, when you develop two solutions, they have to be different. Because we really want to understand whether we have to do something that is like this, you know, or something that is, uh, I don't know, like this. Two completely different things. And then explain in those two design approaches how, you know, you answer to, this, to these questions. Okay, so I think that I explained to you the design strategy to adopt. Of course, this is one of the design strategies, okay? It's not the only one. So, do you have any questions? Please, ask. I change camera. Okay, so here I am. So, first of all, I think that uh, it was very interesting to explain to you this because a lot of people start sketching. When you have a project, you just start sketching. And many times to my students, I say, but before you sketch, do you know what you're going to do or who you're going to do it? Why you're going to do it that way? What is your storytelling? They don't know how to answer. They don't know. So that's when I start talking to them about about this, what we just did together today. Because that's uh, that's very important. I don't know, maybe in school you already do this. I really hope you do it. Because uh, it helps. It guides you so that you don't do big mistakes or you don't forget important parts of a design project development. Okay, so any questions, please ask. If not, I wish you a very good weekend, which will have, we will have also a very nice uh, Formula One Grand Prix. It's going to be very interesting because it's one of the best circuits for Formula One track, race track with that, uh, you know, going up, uphill, very, very fast, very dangerous. We will see what's going to happen. And uh, for those that are uh, on vacation or not yet on vacation, I just uh, published a new video for members. It's a preview. But Tuesday, be here, because probably Monday night, okay, for those that are in America or in this area of, of the world, you will see it uh, during your daytime. There will be a new video published. And besides, I see that a lot of people appreciate a lot of those latest videos I'm publishing that are lessons from my online course. Not everything, but uh, little parts, let's say, that can still be useful for you. And you are a lot, many people watching those. So I'm very, very happy. And as you saw probably, now this channel has 80 extra me uh, subscribers since uh, a month ago so in one month 80 coming for me in my case it's very good so thank you very much i'm very very happy
okay put the like share this video if you want to become a member please you know just join as a member you can just support the channel for less than two euros per month that would be just a support okay with uh with a 15 percent discount on my ebooks and if you want to be a, a real member that has the rights to see the preview video before all the others for several weeks plus a 50 percent discount on my ebooks just like leandro just uh, recently got my ebook with uh, for just seven euros instead of 15 well in that case you have to be member fidelity car design tips fidelity program which is a little bit less than five five dollars okay alexandra did you have a video about managing a design team how works uh, divided yeah uh, no i did i didn't do it yet but i will do it i will do it yeah because when i was in china i was uh, managing for more than a year uh, a, a full uh, full team i had designers modelers virtual modelers and i was let's say the the person responsible for the technical meetings to make sure that i could negotiate with the engineering what we needed and then of course i came back to the to my team which uh which i i, I reserve a very nice uh, souvenir working really hard but having a lot of fun all together and we would make our project or the clay model virtual model and until we the car was, went into production. Yeah, I could talk about that. I will ignore it down. Next time I will talk to you about how to manage a design team. Okay? Thank you, Alexandra, for this uh, suggestion. I will uh, write it down right now so that uh, I need to prepare some uh, photos that I can show you. Okay? I write down. So I know what to be to be prepared for next uh, next friday okay all right thanks you're welcome it's my pleasure my pleasure so some nice little hearts for you guys and girls okay now i think i said it everything today we were not too many only 22 people this means a lot of people are on vacation i guess but good for them next week will be my vacation but during august don't worry this channel will be still alive like last year okay there will be some videos that will come out will be published and maybe also some lives okay so don't worry just check it. Be sure that on Tuesday, with the tutorial videos, and Wednesday and Fridays, with the design talk videos, I should be present every week. Okay? Thank you very much. Ciao. Grazie.